Yeah, he's making strides, and he still has work to work to um, you know work to do. You know, he's uh, he's extremely smart, and then, like you're saying, it's a great question. It's tying that together and physically getting the outcome you want. So he's still working on consistency and all those things, but it's coming. It's coming along. The rotation with him and Dylan, how's that competition going? It's been great, and um, I think they both appreciate it. They're both fighting like crazy, um, and they both want, obviously, that job. And uh, it's been good. It's been good for both of them. What's the biggest challenge for, for Dylan? Looks like the run blocking, pretty, pretty stout, pretty solid. In, in terms of the pass protection, what is maybe a point or two that, that you guys like? Yeah, you know, I, I agree. I think he's doing a nice job in the run game and, um, you know, in drop back protection, as always, with all of our tackles, it's the top of the pocket. And that's where these guys are really good, really good defensively, and they get paid a lot of money. And um, it's just keeping his feet alive and staying in phase. And uh, but he's making strides and, you know, we're happy with where he's coming. What has Aaron Brewer done to kind of, I'm not going to say solidify that left guard spot, but like put himself in a good position? Yeah, I think, you know, um, I think with Aaron, he is just, he's extremely athletic and he's really tough. And so he just, he comes out and works the same way every day. You know exactly who you're getting. You know, um, it doesn't matter who he's going against. It could be a 12-year all-pro player or a rookie. You're going to get the same player. And so we love his consistency. We love his speed. We love his toughness. Um, and, um, you know, he's doing a nice job. How much are you looking for a guy like that to plug in between two veterans, or is it harder because they're going to, you know, they, they expect him to be up to speed with them almost? No, I think it's always easier when you're, you're lined up to both sides with a veteran who's kind of been there before. It can help settle you. It can get you in the right call. But with all that being said, you know, he's kind of going into his third year now, and, um, you know, he's doing a nice job knowing the calls, knowing the playbook, and, getting in the right spot at the right time. So um, it, it's nice really to have three veterans. All, all three of them, I would say, are, uh, you know, veterans at this point. I had a lot of tackles, you know, in, the, in that first preseason game. Yeah. It, you know, is that a function of, of doing things very well or, or also, you know, I guess probably partly the position uh, that he plays too. So, what, you know, what, what did you see? From you could him? call him the professor, Gibby, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Did. But yeah. no, no, he did a nice job. He came in and he helped himself. He, um, he's a smart guy. He's not an error repeater. He comes in once he makes a mistake one time, it's not going to do it again. And it showed up in the game. You know what I mean? He was um, he got off blocks and he was active, and uh, we look look for him to build on it this week. Yeah. Um, chance uh, as well. What are you seeing in terms of, of progress uh, from, from what he's doing? Getting better every day. He's uh, we're putting a lot on his plate. He played a lot of plays in the game, and um, he took a step. He really did. Um, he's got to get in shape as the whole group does. They found out it's a little different out here versus the game. But, um, you know, he was out there three downs, wore the green dot for the first time, and, and it was a good learning experience for Chance. What uh, biggest challenge for your guys when you go up against uh, Tampa? What are, you, what are you looking for? Just to be consistent, to come out there and be physical, to be detailed, and just work the technique and fundamentals that we preach every day. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel like Zach and uh, maybe David are in terms of their communication and their chemistry compared to to last year when things were still a little bit more fresh between the two of them, to seeing them in, in camp now? Well, I wasn't wouldn't, I wouldn't here last year, but I know that it's getting better every day. It's um, They feed off each other. They're, they're kind of the similar players. They're, they're very instinctive guys. They're, they're uh, run and hit kind of players, and um, they're working well together right now. And how, how much does that joint practice? Obviously, Tampa is you know a great crop of, of linebackers themselves, and, and is that something that you might Point two to try and teach somebody something or try and learn from. Uh, how, how formative do you expect that experience? Well, anytime you can you can hit somebody else when it's whatever day we're in right now. It's two and a half weeks into it or wherever we are. It's it's wanted and welcome, and uh, they're excited about it. But we got to have a great day today with within the team. But but um, we're excited to practice against them and play Tampa this week. Absolutely. First factor, I guess, is high is knowing how hard he works when he's on his own. That and and. He comes out and he works extremely hard and, and we get a little bit extra individual time uh, on the field as well in the, as well as in the meeting room uh, to watch this stuff and then obviously do the physical part of it out here doing a special team. So uh, he does a good job. I mean, he's been here in the system five years, so it's not like he doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing. So then we can focus on some of the details and fundamentals of, of his job. And so it's, it's been good for him and it's worked out so far for us. 
Chris Brabel was saying he was he was happy that you made the decision to keep Julius going, you know, even after the early fumble. What kind of went into that uh, decision uh, for you? You know what? As simple as we're all human, we all make mistakes, and uh, Julius is a very conscientious kid. He works extremely hard, and he does everything he's asked to do, uh, and he'll do anything to help this team win. So, uh, you know, just some some of the coaching experiences, I almost treat it like how I'd want to be treated. Well, if I made a mistake, I want an opportunity to try to correct it. And uh, certainly he's made up again of the right things. So, heck, it's an opportunity. It was his first NFL game, and he, he responded and, and, and played well. Did he say anything to you when he came to the sideline after the fumble? Or? Uh, he was upset with himself, just like any of us would be. And, and, you know, it was kind of one of those things, hey, man, drop it. It's in the past. We'll correct it later. Just go back out and play football. What do Hassan and, and some of the other guys need to do maybe to close the gap now on him? Just keep working every day. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say there's a gap. I mean, it's just, it's the way it's been playing. It's the way it works. And everybody just goes out and work, do their part, do what they're asked to do. And when you get an opportunity, take advantage of it. What did you tell Malik, I guess, specifically? Had some good plays, maybe some plays you'd like to see him do better. What's, what's the grade there? Yeah, just, you know, consistency. You know, there's obviously some cool splash flashes, you know, that are really cool. And we just need some real consistency there and that'll come it's a process it's a one percent better each day you know as uh, relative to Malik with a guy like that you know so much athletic ability you, know, you, you want that playmaking ability but you want him to throw the ball too like how do you go about balancing that and not coaching that athleticism yeah you know you don't want to take that away that type of skill set away from a player you just kind of got to work through it it's a process and I think the best thing for any player is just visual evidence of watching the tape and then kind of the light bulb kind of going off, going on. And then you're like, oh, okay, yeah, you know. And so there's a balance there, obviously, that we continue to work through. This is a process. And uh, there's a patience level there to do that. How have you seen the footwork, you know, the lower body and, and the upper part being married? I know that's something you wanted to have. Yeah, it's a process, you know. And the cool thing is Malik self-aware of what he needs to do. And when you're self-aware in anything we, any one of us do, then you have an opportunity to enhance it. And so he's very self-aware of it. We work on it every day. You guys see it, and it's just a process. Yeah, Logan's pretty self-motivated. Always been. He's been through this like for four years now. You know, um, obviously we have to take care of the ball. He knows that. The one of the things he did do is he converted uh, passing on five out of seven third downs passing. Like that was pretty cool. That kind of you don't see that in a loss, but uh, you know that's some efficiency there that was good to build on. Yeah, it's great. It's great to. Uh, you know, you'd have to ask the players, but I always think it's cool to get a, another kind of evaluation when you're able to go against other players other than your own. And then you get some different looks. It's very valuable, you know, and it will be really good for Ryan um, because that can kind of uh, count for some reps as far as and not necessarily taking hits, you know, and getting some, some semi-live reps. So I think that's always a good thing.